that sounded like it did something. Ah, isn't technology wonderful? So, thank you, Don. Technology is fine, technicians. <laughs> Don't worry about those technicians. So if you can find your way in and get your seat, we'll get started. Kind of nice not needing a GPS to find your way into the ballroom, isn't it? With uh, all the construction they had out there at the front. I mean, it, it was uh, last few weeks kind of uh, uh, like going through a corn maze trying to find your way in here. So, well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pebble Creek Community Church on this glorious Lord's Day. It's so good to see so many smiling faces out there this morning, and we are glad that you're here as we gather as the body of Christ to worship and praise Almighty God. I want to welcome all the visitors that are with us this morning as well. We are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. Please stop by the welcome table and pick up a um, welcome packet, visitors packet, if you haven't already done that. Uh, I believe we're all restocked. Last week we actually ran out of them. So if you didn't, if you were here and didn't get one, uh, take advantage of that this morning. And be sure to stop by and introduce yourself to Pastor Bob after the service. He'll be by the back door while you're leaving. And finally, I've been remiss in this. I want to welcome all the visitors that are watching us on the website uh, this morning. So we are glad that you are here, and we hope that you are blessed by our service. And we invite you to come and worship with us live here in the Eagles Next Ballroom when you are able. So now that I've greeted all of you, it would be a great time for you to stand and greet the people around and say hi to someone you haven't greeted this morning. summer there aren't quite as many activities to announce but I always like making sure we, we uh, make you aware of two things and the first is that God's Word tells us to make our requests known to him and we have a group of prayer warriors here to support you with your prayer requests or you can keep them private for the pastor only you can submit them by going onto the website under the prayer request and uh, put, put it in there and the second one is that uh, we don't have an actual offering time during our services due to sanitation reasons of uh, passing the plate. But it is important to remember <clears throat> and take a minute to reflect on what God's blessings are to you and to be able to give back a portion of those tithes and offerings to God. There's an offering box that's at the back table that you can give there, or you can also look on the website for other ways that you can give your offerings to God. I want to thank Edna DeFord this morning for filling in on the, on the 88 Ivories down there while Donna is out on bereavement leave this week. So now as we move into the worship part of our service, please quiet your hearts and minds from the distractions of the world and prepare to worship our Lord as Edna plays the prelude to be with God.
first hymn of praise this morning. Why don't we stand together and we will sing. The words are in your bulletin. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Father, he said, thy word is truth. God's truth this morning is from Genesis, the sixth chapter, the first through the eighth verse. This is what the word of God says. When human beings began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I created and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground. For I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. And may God's word penetrate our hearts and our minds so that we continue to grow in holiness. You may be seated. If you take your bulletins in. In there is Rock of Ages. It's a great hymn, a great hymn. As we talk about being conquerors, start with a new series today, Conquering. And this is a great one to remember that as we try to conquer, our foundation is Jesus Christ, Rock of Ages. <laughs>
to our prayer time uh, before we uh, go to prayer. There's a sad situation going on in Haiti right now, and, and one of the things that we have been doing and, and are trying to do in our support, there's a, a pastor, Wilbins Manjane, who we support. He has two churches. And uh, I sent him an email yesterday because he's within just a few miles of the epicenter, actually. Uh, and he said, uh, he got back in touch with me and, and he said, things are, are, you just can't imagine what it's like here right now. Uh, his home is still standing. He, his in-laws lost their home completely. It was totally demolished. Uh, the church building in Bonbon is standing. It is still standing, but the uh, official church in downtown Jeremy was destroyed. Uh, so there's a lot going on. He said most of the church people he could get in touch with, they're doing fine. Uh, they're okay or just minor injuries. Uh, this morning I checked the, the, dead, the death toll is well over 300. When I talked with him, he was in the hospital lending care wherever he could, but he called me quickly to let me know things were well. Uh, so we need to pray for them. We, we need to keep them in mind. It's more than just uh, the, the official word, and, and we look forward to being able to pray for, for Wilbins and his churches both. We have a lot to pray for this morning. Let's take some time and go to the Lord. Father, we do thank you. We come to you, Lord, and we know that you are our God. You are the God who made us. You are the God who protects us. You are the God who leads and guides, even in ways that we don't always wish we'd have to go. But, Lord, you have told us this is the way we need to go. So, Lord, help us to submit to your will as your son did. Lord, there are so many in need of physical healing. I think of Clyde Dowell and Dina Slack as they are coming up on, on things and getting treatment for Nora Minor, for Sharon Becker and Larry Green, Hal Merwald and Marty Goffer. Lord, for Gary Trample and Jeff and Enid Harrison and Joe and Raymond Scalzo, we know that each of these folks need to have your healing touch placed upon them and we know you can, but Lord, help most of all, help us all to accept your will in all of this. For Lee Ayers and Jackie Horton, for Audrey Hodney and Dory Clark, for Steve, who is the son of Jim Grimm's friend, for Debbie Ripley, for Ray and Beth Hatton, for Lauren K. Hall, and Rich Kula. Lord, each of these need your healing touch. Each of these need your help. Lord, we continue to pray for uh, the family of Doris Giacomo. Lord, we ask that you would bless them, give them peace and comfort and strength. Lord, we do pray for our missionaries today. We know that many of them, we know that those of us that we talk about and pray for and support in Africa are going through difficult times with uh, ability to find food. We know now that Haiti, having had that problem already, will be even worse. Father, we just pray for those missionaries. Lord, they have dedicated their lives to you, given their hearts to you. Lord, may you bless their ministries, each and every one of them. May they find success. May they find peace and comfort. Lord, we pray that you would bless them in all that they do. For our country, Lord, that our leaders would realize that this is the time that we must commit to you. This is where the leadership starts and ends. It's in your son. Lord, for our first responders today, Lord, of what goes on around the world, and, and we know how difficult it is there, so Lord, we know how difficult it must be here. Bless them, give them strength, give them wisdom to know in those split-second decisions what to do. Lord, we thank you for that there are so many that run toward danger to protect us, rather than away. Bless our time here together today. May we be able to hear your spirit and learn from you. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Starting a series on conquering and being conquered. 
I thought this video would be a wonderful way for us to start. This is You Say by Lauren Dale. choose to believe what you say of me, I will say it says of me. You see, that's being a conqueror. 
For the last two weeks, we got to talk about spiritual armor. Here's the question. What do you do with it? What do you do with spiritual armor? I think you go out and you conquer. You conquer the world around you. And I don't mean being offensive. I just mean not submitting to what you're told by outside of the scriptures, but rather choosing to believe what's inside the scripture, and that's what's all about being a conqueror. We have to be offensive and roll over you like a steamroller. God said, Jesus tells us, be wise as servants, harmless as doves. If you learn how to do that, would you let me know? Because I seem to be one or the other. But we need to be bold. We're going to be looking at several different areas of conquering. Today we're going to talk about conquering circumstances. I believe it was Dwight Moody who was in Boston. He was talking to a, a young preacher. He said to him, how are you? The preacher said, laughed and said, not, not bad under the circumstances. Moody said, what are you living under there for? <laughs> it's a choice. It is a choice. I chose to wear a pink tie, believe it or not. By doing so, I chose not to wear something else. But there are many terms in life for circumstances. Not always perfect. We hear things like, oh, that was just bad timing. Oh, that was tough luck, man. Boy, you really made a misstep there, didn't you? Ah, uh, you took that wrong turn. Oh, man, he really veered off course with that one. All different types of circumstances, all different ways, but not many would include this one. Boy, that was God's will for that guy. How many of you look at it that way? Thank you, Jesus, can I have another? No, we wouldn't. But here's the point. It is God's will. Whether you want to agree with it, whether you want to accept it, whether you want to acknowledge it, it is God's will. And that's the cool part, is that I don't have to stop and figure it out and why. I just have to figure out what to do with it. Tough circumstances in the world are just that. They're part of life. Maybe that's just the way it is. But how we deal with circumstances of life and the society's issues that come upon us will make all the difference in the world because here's some of the things you can do. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be happy. Take your golf cart out here, and, you know, on the eighth tee, somebody's coming in from the seventh and you're trying to get to the ninth and boom. Oh, boy, that was so much fun. No. I understand that. But there's different reactions, isn't there? Aren't there? We can be depressed about it. Oh, why me? Why did that happen to me? Why not you? Anxiety. Oh, what am I going to do now? Did trusting the Lord ever come to your mind? How about blame shifting? Oh, it was that guy's fault. Resignation, ah, my life never works out. Acceptance, learning, and my last one, my favorite, joy. Yep, I said joy. How many of us look at the circumstances in our life and say, 
That was cool. James did. James. Chapter 1, verse 2 says, My brothers and sisters, think of the various tests you encounter as occasions from God. Is what that should say. Occasions from God. It tells us that tough circumstances are occasions for joy. I think in the, in the King James it says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials and circumstances. Count it all joy. Well, that wasn't one that made your list. I can guarantee you that. It just wasn't there. However, many believers today feel that the world's issues are more than they are quote, qualified to deal with. That is, what impact can we really have? What difference can we really make in our lives or even in the lives of others and helping them to overcome? So, what have we done? We've resigned ourselves to simply existing within the world's comings and goings. Instead of taking the full armor of God and walking out and saying, I'm not taking it anymore. I am not who you tell me I am, Satan. I am going to be here. I'm going to be an encourager. I am going to be a victor, not a victim. Satan wants us to believe we are victims. Jesus said, you are more than conquerors. More than, I don't know how you'd be more than a conqueror. Conqueror is like, it's like saying I had full and then some. Well, you, you got a full cup. Full cup's a full cup. You, how do you have more than full? Well, he said that's the way it is. You are more than conquerors. But well, we've resigned ourselves to simply existing. There's no hope of victory, just coexisting. Maybe like an armed neutrality. But that is not how Christ expects us to function. We are called to be victors, overcoming the circumstances, not living under them. And Noah, I believe, is one of the best examples of this overcoming spirit. He teaches us that we can conquer our circumstances and live victoriously. From his conquest, we can learn, I believe, three truths that we're going to look at this morning, three truths needed to conquer the circumstances of our time. Because you see, Noah is out in the desert. Here's the thing about being out in the desert. There's very little water. Do I need to explain more? Well, except right now, we're going through monsoon season. And I just heard on the news that Tucson got over 11 inches of snow. Not with snow. Uh, I wish. Uh, they got over 11 inches of rain so far. We've got almost three inches of rain here in the valley. That's a lot of water in the desert. But is it enough to float a 450-foot boat? Probably not. And that's what Noah was called to do. God said, I've got a job for you. And it's going to be this many cubits long, and this many cubits wide, and this many cubits high, and you're going to have a bunch of animals like you never saw in your life. And I have to think that Noah might have even looked at the God and said, Lord, I just have one question. What's a bull? <laughs> but what I learned from him, how conquering circumstances, our first point, circumstances can be conquered by being true to the Lord's teaching. I want you to listen to what society was like in Noah's time. Genesis 6, 5. The Lord saw that humanity had become thoroughly evil on the earth and that every idea of their minds thought of was only, always, excuse me, was always completely evil. I'm going to read that last part. Had become, humanity had become thoroughly evil on the earth, and that every idea their minds thought of was always evil completely. Wow. Every thought was always evil. That's quite a society. 
Humanity was utterly corrupt, that is, evil in heart and conduct. But Noah, as it says in verse 8 at the end of the, the part that we read this morning, it says this, but Noah, I could stop right there, but that would be a funny title, but Noah. But Noah was different. Noah decided, he chose not to do those things. He chose to be something different. Noah wanted what God wanted. Even though evil people seemed to be doing quite well. Noah wanted better. You ever looked around? There's that book, Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? I love what Craig Rochelle, a writer, said. There is only one, there's only ever been one good person in the world, and he volunteered to die. So when bad things happen to good people, that's a relative term. But here we find that Noah wanted better. He wanted to be different. He wanted what God wanted, and he wanted what God directed, and it can be and should be the same for us today. Seems like people who ignore God are doing just fine, though, doesn't it? They have nice houses and nice cars, nice lives, but I still love that act. Those of you who have seen this will know what I mean. It's, it's a green lawn tractor made to look like a John Deere. And the guy's got a big house and a fancy car and the kids are jumping around in the pool and he's riding on his lawn tractor and he looks directly at the camera and he says, can someone help me? I'm drowning in debt. <sighs> Appearances are not reality. You have to understand that. Appearances are not reality, but we have this idea in our heads that because they're wealthy and because they're getting away with things seemingly so, yeah, we're just a tad jealous. But in Matthew 16, 26, it says, what will you gain if you own the whole world but destroy yourself? What would you give to get back your soul? Wow, what would you give? How much of those possessions, when the day of judgment comes like Lazarus who died and the rich man who went to hell and he looks and layers Lazarus in Abraham's bosom and he says, wow, my money did me no good. What would you give? What would you spend? It's the same principle that was in Noah's time as well. All seemed fine. <laughs> All seemed fine right up until the time that Noah's neighbor went. What was that? Everything was great, wasn't it? They knew what rain was. They got a little. And then, bloop, bloop, bloop. And as we said, then it began to rain cats and dogs. Noah was already in the ark with his family. Conquering circumstances can happen when we follow the teachings of God. As we learn to follow the simple teachings of God, circumstances may not disappear, but they certainly fade into the background. Point number two is this. Circumstances can be conquered by following the Lord's leadership. God's leadership of Noah. Noah learned early to follow what God said. In Genesis 6, it says, Noah did everything exactly as God commanded him. I'm not going to ask for any raised hands. I'll say that quickly up front. You know what the question is. How many of you do exactly what God tells you to do every single day? Well, it got really even more quiet in here, didn't it? You notice I didn't raise my hand either. Because we can say, oh, but pastor, we're human. Yes, that works out well. But it says in Genesis that Noah did exactly as God 
directed. What's our excuse? We often want to follow Jesus, right? Oh, we want to follow Jesus, sort of. Oh, man, we want to follow Jesus, mostly. Um, in general, uh, when I can, but I'm going to follow Jesus. You see, Jesus will either be Lord of all or he will be Lord of none. He's not a part-time Jesus. Either you drive the car or he does. I can use all the metaphors you want, but I'll just use that one. Either he drives the car or you do. He's not sitting in the passenger seat trying to give you directions. Noah followed God in two ways. He followed God obediently. Remember? I, I am surprised and I'm pleased that so many of you remember. Remember that old kid song we used to sing in Sunday school? O B E D I E N C E. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Boy, that's simple, isn't it? No theology, just action. Either you follow or you don't. Obedience. Noah followed obediently. Trust and obey. For there's no other way. We might even be singing that later on. But what is best comes from Christ. And that's the difference. Do I want to be better? Or do I want to be best? Not an arrogant best best that God can make me. That takes obedience. Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not practice what I tell you? If we're going to fully follow Christ, we have to be obedient. Well, he followed him obediently, but he also followed him joyfully. How many of us want to get up every single day for one 120 years and go work on a boat that we don't know will ever float. Just say, I don't even want to live to 120, let alone 120 years doing just that. But that was a different time. How many of us want to, over half of Noah's life, he was building a boat and he didn't even know it would float? Other than God said, Noah, it's going to flow. He went, okay, let's go build this. Do you know how hard it would have been to get that much timber in the desert? We think of those. We, I should say, we actually don't think of those things. That is a huge boat. Intricate boat. I don't know Noah was a shipbuilder, neither did he. But he became one. And he did it joyfully. You don't stay at something for 120 years without at least enjoying some of it. Psalm 100, verse 2 says, Serve the Lord with celebration. Come before him with shouts of joy. I love that. With celebration. Thank you, Jesus. Didn't work out at all like I planned. Thank you, Jesus. One of those country music fans, I think it's Garth Brooks, that has a song called, I Thank God for Unanswered Prayer. I bet you every one of us in this room can say that. Him. Oh, we wanted something so bad. And God said, no. No. We look back on it many years later and we go, boy, we dodged a bullet there. Why? Because God knew better. He knew better than you knew. And so we need to remember if we are going to gain victory over our circumstances, we have to follow God's leadership. That's what it's going to take. Because I don't know the way by myself. Third point. Circumstances can be conquered by looking beyond them 
and seeing God working. Read that for yourself just for a second. When you're in the midst of a bad situation, what do you see around you? I'm giving you time to think a minute. I'll say it again. When you're in the middle of a bad situation, what do you see around you? I would dare say the bad situation. Do you see beyond the bad situation? Do you look beyond the bad situation? Do you even try to get vision of what it's going to be like beyond the bad situation? For many of us, the answer is probably no. We don't look beyond it. All I can see is my myopic view of this right here. And I'm looking at it. And I can think about it. And I dwell on it. And Jesus says, lift your head. Your redemption draws nigh. Just look up. Stop looking at your feet. Look up. Look beyond what you're going through to what will be beyond. That is really not easy. That's not easy. I wish I could tell you it was just like tiptoeing through the tulips and cupcakes and marshmallows every single day of your life. But it's not going to be that way. There are certainly difficult circumstances in society today. As mentioned, Noah had that as well. In chapter five, in verse 5 of chapter 6, it says, The Lord saw that humanity had become thoroughly evil on the earth, and that every idea that their minds thought of was always completely evil. That just baffles me. But I know it's true because it's written there. Every idea their minds thought of was always completely evil. We haven't come to that yet, I don't believe, because the Spirit is still here with us. But it's something to think about, isn't it? How did Noah function as a man of God in a completely evil society? How did he even decide to do something different? But Noah did do something different. He did something different. Society said, we're all going this way. And Noah said, not me. Not me. Was that easy? And I'm going to get into more of this in a minute, but do you think that was easy for him to do? Everybody he knew was going that way. And God said, but I need you to go that way. It must have been hard. It must have been hard. But he did something different. He looked beyond the circumstances to see God working. He could see beyond the building of a boat. All the way to the flood 120 years later, he could see God working and was willing to look beyond the tough times. I am sure his buddies gave him just a little bit of a hard time. Noah, been like 40 years. You're still building that boat, and we still don't have any rain. What is wrong with you? And Noah goes, I'm building. It's okay, I'm building. Noah, it's been 80 years. You're still not done with that stupid boat. We're all going down here and have some fun. Why don't you and your family come along? No. We're going to build a boat. Hey, buddy. I'm getting in my boat today. It's been nice to know you. Sure, sure. Whatever. And 
And then everybody got a different view, didn't they? You see, we have to look beyond. We have to look beyond. Because the circumstances that we go through are only that. They're just circumstances. They are not the end in life. They are only something we pass through. I'm reminded of another kid's song, This World Is Not My Home, I'm Just a Passing Through. Remember that one? My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. You see, we're called to something different. We're called to be something different. We're called to do something different. And if we don't do that, we're missing out. There has never been a time when God was not working. Remember that. Even when it says every thought was only evil all the time, there's never been a moment that God was not working in the world. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 15 through 17 say, When Elisha's servant got up the next morning, he saw the Syrian troops had had the town surrounded. Sir, what are, you go what are we going to do, he asked. Don't be afraid, Elijah answered. There are more troops on our side than on theirs. ta -da. You're the servant. And you're looking, and you're like, are they hidden somewhere? Because I don't see anybody but you and me, Elijah. And I see a bunch of people up there. And they all got swords and arrows and bows and spears and they don't look too happy. So unless you've got something, I don't see. And that's exactly what Elijah says in verse 17. Then he prayed, Lord, please help him see. And the Lord let the servants see and the, that the hill was covered with fiery horses and flaming chariots all around Elijah. I get chills just reading. When it looked like Elijah and his servant would die, God steps in to continue his work. If we can see God working, then we will see him victorious. If you can't imagine that God is working in your life, then there's nothing to try for. There's no point. No one knew God would be victorious during that 120-year construction project, Noah remained convinced that the flood would come. And we can see a victorious God as well. 1 John 4.4 4 says, Children, you belong to God and have defeated these enemies. God's Spirit is in you and is more powerful than the one in the world. God is more powerful than evil. Therefore, our circumstances are not greater than his overcoming power. Did you get that? Because God's spirit is more powerful than the circumstances. We will overcome. I didn't say we wouldn't go through the trial, but we will overcome. Circumstances are certainly difficult sometimes, and they are real. And they vary with each person in here. What might overwhelm me might be a breeze for somebody else. But one thing is for certain. We all can have victory over the circumstances in our life. That I promise you. I don't make promises too often, but that I promise you. We can have victory. Why? Because when we stay true to the Lord's teachings, when we stay close to his leading, when we look beyond the trouble to the power that he has, then we will come out on top. We will come out on top. And circumstances of life will have no power over us. said, these light and momentary troubles are nothing 
compared to the glory that I will see when I stand with Jesus. We're paraphrasing that, but he, I remember that in the, he said these light and momentary troubles. Oh, they don't feel light, do they? They don't feel momentary. They feel like they're going to last forever. But how many of those have you gone through? How many can look back over their lives and see the struggles and you go, you know what? God brought me through that one. And God brought me through that one. And God brought me through that one. But gee, I don't know if he's going to bring me through this one. Of course he will. He brought you through every other one. He'll bring you through this one. Concrete circumstances is the first way we can put our spiritual armor to work. It's always remembered that because of Jesus, we are more than conquerors. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for bringing us together as a group this morning. Lord, we just pray that you would guide and direct, help us to always remember to be those conquerors that you have made us. Lord, help us to be the person that you need me to be. Help me to share my life and my circumstances and all the things that have happened to me. Lord, help me to share that with others that they too might be able to see you again in their lives. Some of you may be wondering, how do I do that? I just don't understand how Jesus can take that all away. Well, the first thing you have to do is understand that Jesus can take away all sin. And when you have had your sin forgiven, then you have power to overcome. If you've never given your heart to Christ, either here in the auditorium, at home as you're watching through our website, just pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for forgiving my sins. Thank you for being my Redeemer, my Savior, my guide, my director. Help me to walk an overcoming lifestyle that will honor you in all that you have said. Help me to walk that life and be that mirror image that you've called me to be. If you prayed that with me this morning, please, please see me, contact me. My information is on our website. And Father, help us all to be the people you need us to be, the people you want us to be. Lord, may we always look to you for everything in overcoming the things around us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you take your bulletins, our closing hymn is Trust and obey. I'm going to ask you to stand. We'll sing together. Trust and obey.
present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, both now and forevermore. Amen.